We support a lot of agent use cases today, um, and uh, obviously the LLM is behind uh, running those agents. Uh, I, you know, the case studies on a SQL agent, right, able to ping a database um, with the SQL it's generated and be able to respond back to the user. Um, my view of agents is that it's kind of just like it's it's kind of object like object oriented programming um, where it's um, taking. Uh, a different center. Instead of looking at each LLM, each LLM call, it's saying, okay, here's something that is almost like a something I understand, like an object or a person, um, and being able to say, okay, it can do all of these tasks. And all those tasks are LLM calls. Um, so I kind of think of an agent as um, something that does more than one LLM call and is like thinking about it from this you know, center of gravity of like, how person-like can I get this so that I understand it in my worldview? Um, it's interesting because historically, uh, AI researchers, we haven't really thought about it from the lens of agents. I think um, that really has emerged from the community um, of both developers and because um, I think code agents became incredibly um, uh, interesting and hyped up. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. I, and I think um, from like a marketing perspective, I actually think it's in a... And um, an explainability perspective, I think it's actually incredible because it explains, you know, how people view the world and what the AI could do. Now there is a gap between what it can do and um, those uh, those goals and potential fantasies. So I think, get, you know, bridging that gap is probably an important piece of it and understanding that at the end of the day, the most computationally expensive and the most important piece of that agent is the LLM. Like that is the hardest piece of it. And uh I am a little bit worried about those who call an LLM like 30 times within a workflow and still expect real time uh, latency on them because realistically, um, that that's that's probably not the approach you want to get if you expect your agent to be you know real time like a person and then you do 30 LLM calls which are all highly and you know requiring extremely high intelligence um, to be able to understand what's going on and so I think there will need to be specialization and we start we we've started seeing people both memory tuning and fine tuning um, these models so that instead of 30 calls or three calls or even one call um, to make it much more real time mm -hmm. and is that, is that a question of uh, it's just too computationally intensive and therefore expensive and then slow uh, or is it a question of the error uh, the Compounding. potential hallucination compounds, or is it both? It's both of those things. Yeah. And I think people are addressing error today by adding more calls to the model of filtering out the requests. Um, and I think, uh, I don't think that'll work for serious production use cases. Uh, it, it makes it harder to work with those that, that entire um, blob. But for, for a prototype, I think it's perfect. Mm. I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, like show that it is doable or almost doable, right? Um, I think that actually is able to help you get the right data to then maybe even fine tune or, or adjust the model to do it in, in one shot, in one call. <laughs>